All right, this is it, park four. We're at Big Bend National Park and I am so excited. Welcome to Big Bend. Come along to one of our favorite national parks, a place full of history, great hiking, hot spring soaking, and even a trip south of the border into Mexico. We're Howard and Caitlin New State. This year, we're traveling to 51 parks in 52 weeks. We're visiting all the U.S. national parks in the lower 48 in a special Winnebago Vista NPF limited edition. Each week, we're sharing where to stay, what to do, and introducing you to the people doing incredible work across our national parks. Designated as such in 1935, this once hidden gem of a national park has nearly doubled its visitation in the past decade. With no major cities or towns nearby, most visitors are driving at least four hours or more in order to explore all that Big Bend has to offer. It's the 15th largest national park in the system, and with 200 miles of trails, several campgrounds, and more than 800,000 acres, it really is a destination park where you should plan to spend several days. There are two main entrances into the park, from Marathon, and yes, that is how it's pronounced, and from Terlingua. There are two gas stations inside the park, but it can be a bit more per gallon, so you might want to fill up ahead of time. We entered from Marathon and drove about 70 miles to the Panther Junction Visitor Center, which is always a great first stop. Here we grabbed a map, got our passport stamp, and a sticker and a magnet. So since we actually have a magnet board, we're getting magnets. Yay! We're collecting magnets for every single park that we visit. That's 51 magnets. <laughs> and Big Ben has some good ones to choose from. Yeah, look, I mean, look. They have an actual magnet of the sign. That's cool. Genius. I know, how are we gonna pick? It cuts off the Yay, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. The drive into Big Bend is just so beautiful and it changes the further that you go. We are heading down to Rio Grande Village, which is where we are camping for the weekend. And as you get closer to the Rio Grande Village, there are these magnificent mountains. It's like this massive wall and you can see all of the lines and colors and it's just absolutely incredible, especially if you can come in when the sun is lower. It's about 5.30 right now and it's perfect because it's really starting to illuminate that mountain is so beautiful. All right, well, there is a dump station and freshwater fill right at the entrance of the campground, so we're gonna fill up. So the Rio Grande campground is all dry camping, but if you need hookups, at the camp store, there are RV hookup sites, and those are, I think, electric and water, I believe, but you still need to dump your tanks here. So we made it to our site, which is site 45. Uh, we are in the no generator zone. So if you are in this area, you have got to rely on your batteries and your solar. What do we find? They're, they are bluebirds, but they don't look like bluebirds I've ever seen. <laughs> but yeah, they're right here. They're right in the tree. They're like bright blue and a brown. They're so pretty. They're like, trying to stay warm because it's going to be very cold tonight. Cold. Whew. Yeah, the ranger said it's going to snow and that there will be snow visible on the tops of mountains. Okay, we knew it was going to be a long travel day, so we got one of our favorite pre-made things from Costco, which are these amazing tacos. They are seriously so good. And I'm going to pop this on the stove, heat it up, chop up some avocado and some onion, and we're going to celebrate arriving to Big Bend. All right, it's time to go explore. We have layers, we have lots of water, and we are heading out to explore the Rio Grande area now, and I cannot wait to take you along. How's it going? Good. You know, just back in my element. <laughs> Doing what we do, putting the CRV to the test. <laughs> Taking a CRV where no CRV should go. <laughs> in case you couldn't tell, we have left the pavement and we are now on a dirt road. We're going about five miles down Old Ore Road to Ernst Tinaja, which is beautiful from the photos. It's like in a canyon and there's some water and it's about, what, a half mile one way? So one mile round trip to go see that. The ranger told us, because we asked beforehand what the condition of the road was, and he said that in our all-wheel drive, semi-high clearance vehicle, as long as we take it slow, we should be okay. So far, so good, it's just both. And it is beautiful, and there are tons of cactus, so that makes me very happy. That was a challenging road, but not an impossible road. But 
even if you don't have a vehicle that could do that type of a road, you can still have an amazing time. There are tons of trails that you can do that all off of paved roads, um, either Rio Grande, the Cottonwood area, or Chisos Basin. Wow, this is already so cool. I think we walk along the wash for most of it. This right here is already worth it to me. This is just incredible to look at. It literally looks like somebody just took it and peeled it apart and it's so jagged. You can see all of the different layers. It's beautiful. All right, we made it. And we just talked to a longtime visitor who has visited this spot more than 20 times. He says this is actually the lowest he has ever seen the water because they have not gotten much rainfall this season. But they've also seen times where it's overflowing and that gravel area down there is like a beach. And this is the only source of water in this entire mountain range here. So what did you think? Oh, I thought that was an excellent first stop. Just look at it, it's so beautiful. Not that bad. What, maybe a half mile, Caitlin? Yeah, it was quick. Hike. Yeah. Look at all the layers and the colors, and it almost looks like um, a combination of like a, like a cartoon, like a sketch, because there's, there's black lines that kind of undulate through the various layers. It looks like a drawing brought to life. We're going to hike back to the car, and then through the magic of editing, we will be to our next stop. Ah, nothing good on, huh? Nothing good on the radio right now. <laughs> this is just our silent ride here up to Chisos Basin, right? Is that where we're going next? Chisos Basin, yes. So after doing that drive, I can definitely see why there's that sign that says no RVs over 24 feet. I think it's probably because of the windy road. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of switchbacks. Yeah. There are several hikes that you can take from here. There's also a lodge and a restaurant. And we're going to go check out the menu real quick. Well, the menu looked pretty good. Unfortunately, for time, I don't think we're going to have enough time to eat there. But uh, they had barbecue, sandwiches, steak. Lots of really yummy salads. I yeah. know. It did look good. But well, we got some hot springs coming up later, so. Ooh. <laughs> okay, we got a big trail today. We are doing the window view trail, not the window trail. The window trail is five miles. The window view trail, less than 0.5 miles round trip. Uh, but you get a great view of the window. You're just not getting up close to it. Made it to the window view. And this trail is great because it is fully paved. So it really is accessible to everybody. And you get a great view of the window within about 15 minutes. It doesn't get much better than seeing wildlife. We just finished the loop trail and these three deer came bounding through the brush and that was the perfect ending. Welcome to our second dirt road adventure of the day. Ooh. <laughs> this road is wider and a little bit smoother than the first one. We're heading now to one of our favorite areas and probably one of the most popular areas here in Big Bend National Park, and that is the historic hot springs area, where there is a free hot spring that you can soak in right on the Rio Grande. What's going on, Caitlin? Well, there are these tiny little gnats that are harmless, but they're very annoying. And so I discovered that I had this that I could do. <laughs> How are you doing there? Ah, uh, you know, flies. <laughs> so we came here in 2018. It's one of our favorite things we did. And back in 2018, we were driving a Hyundai Santa Fe and it had rained right before. It was so slippery on this road that we actually had to abort the one day and come back another day where we could drive down to an area that is for RV parking. Um, but even from there, it's one mile to the hot springs. So today we were able to drive all the way down and it's only a quarter mile. It's really fast. We'll be at the hot springs here in about five minutes. Yeah, I see the river. And look at these beautiful palm trees. Yeah. In the early 1900s, this area was acquired through the Homestead Act by the Langford family. J.O. Langford had heard tales of the healing waters here and after experiencing it for himself, decided to open a hot spring spa and eventually a post office. You can still see remnants of the historic buildings as you hike out to the namesake Langford Hot Springs. It's so cool. This trail takes you right along the Rio Grande and that is Mexico right there, maybe, I don't know, 20 feet away. It's awesome. It 
doesn't get much more picturesque than this. The sun is setting, you've got the hot spring right along the Rio Grande with horses in the river behind it. Beautiful. All right, that was super relaxing and fun and getting in the Rio Grande was definitely worth it. It was ice cold, but then coming back into the hot was really nice too. And Howard pointed out a very important tip. These little bugs are biting, so I stand corrected. So we're gonna book it back to the car and head back to camp. morning. We are heading over to the amphitheater here at the Rio Grande Village campground and that's one of the major benefits of camping inside the park is that you can attend some of the early ranger-led programs and we're going on a bird walk on the nature trail and I'm hoping that we can spot some wildlife. Welcome to Big Bend National Park. Um, I have been a ranger here for about three years now and I absolutely love Big Bend. I grew up coming to this park with my parents so it's a place that's very special to me, and so I'm happy y'all are able to be here for a little while to experience this. We are just at the start of spring migration here in Big Bend. From about the end of February until mid-May um, is an exciting time to be a birder in Big Bend because this is when we have a lot of things passing through that you don't normally see down here in Big Bend. And some of us, it's kind of a casual hobby. For other people, it's a little more intense. You know, you might say, oh, I heard that there was a white spotted yellow rumped warbler. You know, that's a, a bird I'm making up, but somewhere. And so some people get really excited and they will go exactly to that location to try to find that bird. Right now, up a little higher is the female. You don't see the red on the head. We're going to continue around the back side of the campground over to the nature trail. So uh, when you see that flip of the tail, you, you know it's a flycatcher. Flycatchers are great if you're a photographer because they'll often sit on one exposed perch, fly out, grab a bug of some kind, and sometimes come back to the exact same perch again. So it makes them really easy to photograph. <laughs> there have been more species of birds identified here in Big Bend than any other national park. I think Christy said about 450 different species. And part of that is because this is along a big migratory route for the birds. And there are also many habitats. If you were to climb up to the very top of Emory Peak, which is the highest point in the park, you would be um, gaining 6,000 feet in elevation from, from down here. And so because of that, we have riparian habitats, we have desert shrublands, so tall grasslands, and then as you climb in elevation, you get into the pinyon juniper woodlands, and then eventually up into the high, what we call the moist canyons that are um, in the higher elevations of the park. We've seen a lot of birds so far, and I'm not going to even pretend to remember the names. I know we've seen cardinals and some other very yes. common ones. I'm still crossing my fingers for some roadrunners. We'll see. But Christy is so knowledgeable. She grew up in this area, and it shows. Like, she knows everything about every kind of bird that we're seeing and her knowledge is really incredible and then we're seeing all these little fish and we've learned that the teeny tiny ones are native to the area while the bigger ones are invasive tilapia this nature trail is a great option where you can see a lot of different things very quickly in a short distance you can overlook the mountains you got views of the water you can see different types of cacti and a lot of birds all in one spot taking the uh, spur that's going to take us down to the river and here's another spot that you can check out the river right from the campground. Would you just look at this? This is cactus heaven. It's beautiful. Come on, guys. <laughs> oh, look at them all. Oh, you'll have to take my photo here, okay? Okay, look at all the cactus friends. Oh my god. <laughs> And this is getting me really excited for our next stop, little teaser, where some of my favorite cactus friends will be. What'd you find, Caitlin? See these, they're like perfect little, they almost look like little raccoon prints. I don't know if there are raccoons here, but that's what it looks like to me. And they're just the cutest little hands. Man. So cute. Oh my God, oh my God, Howard. Oh my God. There are horses in the river. Go. <gasps> They're so beautiful. Oh, I'm gonna go. So Ranger Christie confirmed these are not wild horses. There aren't wild horses here. Most likely they belong to somebody in Mexico and they just kind of roam and then they'll either come look for them or the horses will go back to their home. But they're down here drinking water and just enjoying the morning like us.
that was amazing. I'm so glad that we took the little spur trail down to the river because you never know what you're gonna find. There could just be horses here. And they're so beautiful. It was the perfect end to a great morning. Big Bend is a pretty remote national park. The nearest major town is 100 miles away, so the park is always looking at ways to be more sustainable and self-sufficient. With roughly half a million visitors each year and an on-site population of 250 rangers, their families, and supporting staff, all of us are creating a lot of garbage. Given the remoteness, Big Bend is one of only two national parks with their own active landfills. The real issue for us is kind of twofold. One is the landfill is filling up, uh, and the other is where the National Park Service is. So we should be doing things sustainably. Deputy Superintendent Rick Jutman wanted to do something about it and try to prevent a second landfill from being created. Most people don't get very excited about that idea of digging a hole in a national park and putting trash in the ground. 2019, we had started this landfill discussion. And so we made up little signs and we laminated them and we put them on trash cans that said, you know, hey, everything you put in here goes into landfill. And we went up to the recycle center and we made little handmade signs that said, hey, you know, plastic ones and twos and aluminum cans and take your caps off your bottles. And it was really fun, but that's all we could do because we had no funding. Uh, and, and this is not an exaggeration. This was a grassroots, right? Just a bunch of employees that got together in our time off to try and do something about this. And we just were not able to do anything. This stuff costs money. And I mean big money. We just put this exhibit up. This is probably one of the most looked at exhibits in the entire park. Really? It's a picture of a trash truck dumping trash on the ground. And yet I can't tell you how many families walk up to this thing and sit there and look at it because it talks about trash, how much time it takes for the stuff to biodegrade, you know, when we put it in into the ground and, and why you should recycle. This was part of a grant to put these exhibits in to, to just educate people and say, look, this is what happens when you don't recycle. You could stand here and, and you could actually film people like, you know, Trying all to day, yeah. people go like this. We've gotten several grants to replace with the new style bins. Recycling really is one of the more complicated things for most people to understand. If you didn't grow up with it, it's not intuitive. Getting people to understand that you should do it because everything that gets thrown in here goes into the ground in the park. Mm -hmm. Aluminum can. I mean, every one of these bags of trash, it was easiest just to take the entire bag from the trash can and, and dump it in here. And yeah, it's really gross. My hands are gross. I just <laughs> went through somebody's trash. Went through somebody's trash right. and it looks like there's some diapers in there. So I should probably wash my hands now. And since Big Ben has a landfill and a recycling center on site, you might think they have an entire team to collect, sort, and manage all this waste. Well, think again. The park has one full-time employee and one volunteer who do it all. Just drop her. Everything that comes from those recycle bins comes here to this place and it's manually sorted. And it's manually sorted by Robert, our volunteer, or Jason, our employee. But that's it. So when this program was first started, they just had the solo baler. And, and that baler is from 96, that's the date on it. But now with having four balers, it really speeds up our process and we're not stacking and stacking of just loose material. So in the last five months, this is what we have processed. 3,100 pounds of aluminum, cardboard 21,018 pounds, mixed paper is 1,431 pounds, plastics 4,252 pounds, mixed metals 10,440 pounds at five point. 22 tons. Oh my goodness. Every single person that walks up to this with a bag has a choice. Yeah. So we have to make the decision, which guest do we want to be? Yeah. What started as a proof of concept by passionate employees has grown and secured significant funding to expand sustainability initiatives at the park. So this is one of our kind of pride and joy projects. So this is going to be a covered employee parking lot and it's going to be covered with solar panels, which is actually going to provide us enough electricity to power the visitor center. That's incredible. Yeah. The Big Ben Conservancy stepped in. That's our philanthropic partner. So they, they fundraise for Big Ben National Park. That's, that's what they do is they su supply funding for different projects that we don't necessarily have federal funding for. Since 2019, they've been able to raise about a half million dollars for sustainability projects. We couldn't do it. We, we literally didn't do it. We tried, I tried. 
without the Big Bend Conservancy, without APCA, all these other partners um, that you know came in and said, yeah, this is a really big deal. All right, I am on a little solo expedition right now. We have a short amount of time left in Rio Grande Village before we head to the other side of the park to camp there for two days. And there's a border crossing into Mexico and there's a village there and you can take a little boat over. So I'm gonna go do that. Howard had some work calls that he had to be on and he was like, you know what? Go ahead, have a good time. Let me know how it is. So you guys are gonna come along with me to Mexico. I think this is a popular thing to do based upon all of these cars. All right, so once I parked, I went into the building and they told me that I didn't need to show my passport until I came back, that I walked down to the river crossing and that it is $5 round trip. And then once I get over into Mexico, I have a choice where I can either walk into town or I can take a ride for about 10 or $15. So we'll see what I feel like doing. Just passed a group of kids and they said, it's amazing there. So that makes me even more excited if it gets their stamp of approval. So I'm guessing that's gonna be the boat that we take, and this is the Rio Grande. So I'm on the US side right now. We'll be going over into Mexico. Right, I'm gonna take a burrow. Oh, $10, I think it's worth it. Come here, yeah? go. Okay. okay. All right. Remember, bring the same donkey, Gabriel. <laughs> okay. It's real nice. You want me to take a picture? <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, it's on video? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Kaylin. <I'm> <laughs> okay, yeah. bye. <laughs> Adios. such a cool experience and I highly recommend doing it if you visit and you have your passport with you or make sure you bring it so that you can do it. The town of Boquillas is very charming and is very tiny. Gabriel told me 250 people live there. Everybody knows each other. He was born and raised there. There's a church in town where a pastor comes once a month to perform a service and there are two restaurants. So I ate at the one on the left. That's where Gabriel took me. It has a beautiful view of the canyon and I had some delicious tacos and then I bought a souvenir uh, koozie. So it was a really neat experience and something that I think is definitely worth it when you are here. The border was closed after 9-11 up until 2013 and this is a town that heavily relies on tourism. I was actually getting a little emotional reading the back of the uh, restaurant menu that has the story of the restaurant and they didn't have anybody coming over to their town for that many years and so it really meant a lot to them when it did reopen and when people visited it, that is income for them. So I think it's just a wonderful thing. They love sharing their town with everybody. If you want to write a name. Oh yeah. Where you come from. All right, one more stop, which is going through the border. And then I'll head back to Howard and I'll try not to rub it in too much about what a cool experience I had. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, the time has come for us to pack up the RV, but it's for good reason. There are so many awesome places to camp here within Big Bend, and it is such a big park. So we are heading all the way across the park to the Cottonwood Campground, and we're gonna go explore an area that we have never been to. made it to Cottonwood Campground and a couple of things I wanted to share with you guys. Number one, the Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive down into Cottonwood is incredibly beautiful. Just know that if you're doing it in an RV that is of similar length, 30 feet or longer, you're going to want to budget enough time. There are a couple of switchbacks and it's just a windy mountain road. So just know that and set your expectations going into it that it's something that you have to take very slow. The second thing is Cottonwood Campground. The sites are pretty small and so I had checked the length of our campsite when I was booking it and it said 37 feet long. I was like, okay, great, we're fine. One thing I didn't know and it was because I was juggling like cancellations and trying to grab it really fast and this is a lesson for me so I'm sharing it with you make sure that you read the campsite notes that are on recreation.gov for that specific site it indicated that there were low hanging branches in the site and therefore taller rigs might not fit we could have made it work but we were right on the line of like being in the road so a very nice couple uh, agreed to switch with us and we fit into the site much better make sure you check those notes 
It was a good lesson for me. Okay, this is another must do when you're here at Big Ben. We are at the Santa Elena, Santa Elena, Saint Ale Santa, Santa Elena. Santa, no, Santa Elena, Santa Elena. All right. Action. We are at the Santa Elena Canyon hike. Are you Good. prepared? I am prepared. You don't want to look like her. No. Not having a good time. This is one of the must-do hikes here at Big Bend. Um, we've been told by the rangers it's about 45 minutes if you really hoof it, or about an hour to an hour and a half if you take your time. It is supposedly beautiful. The pictures look amazing. I can't wait to do it. Oh, this is amazing. This, this is awesome. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. You know, you get, you get your steps in when you're doing the uh, switchbacks, but then it evens out really nicely. And now we're just walking along the banks of the Rio Grande and it's beautiful. It's so incredible. This is one of my new favorite hikes, I think. It's awesome. We have made it to one of the most picturesque spots I think I've ever seen in my life. The canyon walls are so tall. I don't know if they'll even be conveyed properly in this video. It's just something that you have to see in person to really appreciate it. It's beautiful and I'm kind of talking a little quiet because your voice really echoes here. As we were coming around the corner, you could hear kids and they sounded like they were right next to you. This is so incredible just been sitting here admiring the view and it's really neat because the river is so slowly moving that it creates like a mirror and the reflection it just makes it even more grand. Well I actually thought it was a pretty easy hike with really great results at the end. This is almost ethereal. The quiet, hearing the birds. This is just such a beautiful spot. I think we time this really well, uh, both on time of year and time of day, because today's high was like 80 something degrees, but in the canyon, as the sun is setting, you get the beautiful light in the background and the temperature is cooling off really nicely. This is a perfect time to be here. The bugs are back today. We thought it'd be interesting to take a short hike. This is only a one mile round trip uh, to the Dorgan House. Uh, this is actually what used to be part of the Grand Canyon Farms operation. This is one of the remaining structures from that. The Dorgan House, what's particularly interesting about it, is it has a petrified wood fireplace that has still survived to this day. This building was originally constructed in the early 1900s, but was fully abandoned by the 1930s. Okay, we're here at Historic Castellon, and the building behind me is the old general store. Now back in 2019, we visited before we had the YouTube channel, but the store was open and we were able to go inside and it was wonderful. Well, a couple months later in May of 2019, they had a tragic fire. The fire started in Mexico, went across the Rio Grande, and then the embers ultimately spread and burned down the building behind us, the general store, as well as the latrine. As you can see, currently they've stabilized the building, but it still has a long way to go for restoration. They actually moved the visitor center to one of the other historic sites right behind us. Howard has informed me that the mule ears are my ears right now. <laughs> There are so many great overlooks along the Ross Maxwell Scenic Trail, and one of the most iconic one is the Mule Ears Overlook. And you can see those right here behind me. There is a trail that you can take, I think, out to them, but you also get a great view along the road or here from the overlook. All right, well, it was an adventure in and of itself to even get to this trailhead. We are getting ready to do the Pine Canyon Trail, and to get here requires a drive on about a six mile dirt road. It's pretty rough towards the end, but again, we did it in the CRV. If you take it slow, you can do it. This is Ranger Rick's favorite hike, he told us. So I'm very excited to see it. So I'm swapping out my uh, tennis shoes here or the hiking boots, because there's apparently a lot of loose gravel. So if you are planning to do this, make sure you have your good sturdy shoes. Ready? Yeah, are you excited? Oh yeah. Well, I feel like everybody does the Lost Mine Trail, right? That's like the number one hike in the park. So why don't we do something a little bit different? Yeah, it's harder to get to, but 
supposedly the views are just as beautiful. Thousand foot elevation game. Whew. Bears, mountain lions, and snakes. Somebody on all trails said they saw a tarantula. Somebody said they saw a sheep, a rattlesnake. So who knows what we're gonna find here. And it is four miles, folks. Four miles round trip. So that's not too bad. Two miles up and back. All right. It's the first like big hike we've done in a long time. I know. Let's go. Okay. Happy Caitlin. <laughs> the breeze feels good. So far so good? So far so good. It's a very gradual incline up, but you're definitely going up and the loose rocks make it a little trickier. I got a little winded, but overall, yeah, doing great. The views are just amazing and that certainly helps. <laughs> Trees. All right, we've made it to, I think, the transition from the desert to the pine tree forest. There are tons of trees behind us here. And we've been hiking now for about 45 minutes with stops for water and photos. So I feel like we've made pretty good time and neither one of us feel like super winded. So that's your trip report from uh, Kayla New State. It's really starting to transform cactus and trees at the same time. <laughs> Exhausted. What'd you think? The last, I don't know, half a mile, maybe. Really steep with a lot of rocks and climbing. That was definitely the hardest part. But we made it. This is where the waterfall normally would be <laughs> if there was enough rain. Um, but it's so cool to be in this canyon. It makes you feel really small. Okay, ready? Back down we go. Okay. It's 5.50, so that's 48 minutes. So it took half the amount of time coming back down. That's to be expected. This is definitely not a easy hike. The beginning of the hike is fine. The last quarter mile is a lot of straight up. Um, so just keep that in mind. You may not want to necessarily take on this hike unless you're comfortable, as we literally took almost half the amount of time going up just on that final quarter mile. But we did it. But we did it. Oh, let's <laughs> nice go job, eat. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> on our next episode, it's off to park number five, home to my favorite cactus, lots of history, incredible ecosystems, and one of our all time favorite campgrounds. We're taking you to Saguaro National Park in Southern Arizona. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.